Hey, 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 what's going on, people? It's your boy, Brandon Bravon Towns, host of that show called Sports Plus Life. Yep, and I got some stuff to talk about today. So, turn it off, turn it off, turn it all the way off, huh? All right, yes, please allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Brandon Bravon Towns, and this is, again, Sports Plus Life. If you are a first-time listener to this year's show, definitely hit that subscribe button and become part of the Sports Plus Life family. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or just want to give a shout-out, or even if you just want to diss me, just go ahead and leave your comments in the comment box below. So uh, how is everybody doing today? Oh, man. It is a nice spring day, a little breezy, but to me, perfect weather. Perfect weather here in Richmond, Virginia. It's about 67 degrees right now, and um, it's cool. You know, it's it's very cool. Um, I This morning, I had to go get a haircut, uh, took my kids, stopped by my grandmother's house, and then went to this little uh, community yard sale over at the high school right around the corner from where we live at. And later on, I'm going to go to this French food festival. That's right around the corner, too. So I didn't go last year, but I'm going to definitely go this year. And um, I know this event at Browns Island is about to come up, too. That should come up maybe maybe next week, maybe next week, maybe the next two weeks, something like that. But I'm definitely going to hit it up. But assuming I don't have to work. So you have to to keep that in mind. Assuming I don't have to work because I got off this weekend. Yay! But anyway, it is Saturday, April 27th, 2019. And again, like I said, while the entry music was playing, really get your mind right, I have a lot of stuff to talk about today. Um, I'm going to talk about the NFL draft, not really the details of it. Cause I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't watch the NFL draft like that. I might watch the first couple of picks in the first round because it is too many players. Like my dad, my dad told me this a few years ago. I asked him, when are you going to watch the NFL draft? He said, for what? He said, you know how many college football players there are? You know how many players are going to get drafted? And you know how many of those players you're probably never going to hear from again? And I was like, wow, that's a good point. I mean, of course, the NFL has done a bang-up job with making the draft now an event all the way up to primetime ABC television. But, yeah, I just – I don't watch it like that either because, you know, I don't know. I mean, like, it's on right now on my TV, but I'm not really paying a lick of attention to it. To be honest with you, I'm not. But I'm going to talk about the draft. I'm going to talk about some of the picks in the draft. I'm going to talk about Tyreek Hill – And uh, also the NBA playoffs, as we're pretty much fully into the second round now. One game seven, uh, one game seven tonight. And then I'm going to give a recap over the amazing, the amazing, fantastic Avengers Endgame. Now, if you haven't seen it yet, once I get to the Avengers recap part, feel free to, you know, turn it off or go to another uh, YouTube program, whatever. But anyway, without further ado, let's get to it. All right, as I said, I'm going to start off early with the NFL draft. As expected, even though people tried to throw some shade on it over the last week, as expected, Kyler Murray was taken number one overall by the Arizona Cardinals, which actually ended up leading to... Just yesterday, Josh Rosen being traded from the Arizona Cardinals to the Miami Dolphins because the Miami Dolphins uh, did release Ryan Tannehill. Uh, Their starting quarterback coming into the season is supposed to be Ryan Fitzpatrick, which means the Dolphins will be respectable for four games, the first four games of the season. So, yes, Kyler Murray is an Arizona Cardinal. The second pick overall was Nick Bosa for the San Francisco 49ers, the defensive lineman for the <clears throat> excuse me, the defensive lineman for the Ohio State Buckeyes who barely played this season coming up. He barely 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 played to be honest with you. And um but he still gets the number 1 pick. We all know what a beast his brother 
uh, Joey Bosa is for the uh, Los Angeles Chargers. The New York Jets took Quinnen Williams, the defensive tackle from Alabama. The Oakland Raiders took Cleland Farrell, the defensive end from Clemson, which kind of turned a lot of heads. I'm happy. Shout out to Cleland Farrell. He is from Richmond, Virginia. He went to Benedictine High School. And, um, you know, big ups to him. Shout out to him for being the fourth overall pick. Tampa Bay is going back to their defensive roots, picking Devin White, the linebacker, the awesome linebacker from LSU. I kind of wanted him. Now, number six, the most talked about pick. As we know, the New York Giants were the sixth pick in, uh, had the sixth pick in the draft. Through about the first three quarters of the process as far as since the Super Bowl all the way up to leading up to the draft, you know, everybody was pretty much leading with the fact that, hey, the Giants, they need a quarterback. You know, Eli's in his twilight, and I think they'll probably draft Dwayne Haskins. Dwayne Haskins, the quarterback from Ohio State, who threw 50 touchdown passes this past season, only eight interceptions, and was third in the Heisman Trophy voting. That guy. And all of a sudden, over the last week, we started hearing something about a quarterback named Daniel Jones. Who is Daniel Jones, mind you? Pretty sure you guys know by now. He was the quarterback for the Duke Blue Devils. Now, I'm going to say that again. He is the quarterback for the Duke Blue Devils. Uh, When has Duke been known for football? Uh, that's just a serious question. When has the Duke Blue Devils been known for football? And furthermore, how is this guy, who was the seventh rated passer in his own conference, mind you, not the seventh rated passer in the country, the seventh rated passer in the ACC. Uh huh. How is he, you know, number six in the overall NFL draft pick material? So, the only quarterback, you mean to tell me the only quarterback who was better than Daniel Jones was Kyler Murray? Really? The only, okay, well, let me take that back. The only one who was better in the draft was Kyler Murray. So Will Greer wasn't better. Drew Luck wasn't Drew. Uh, Drew Lock wasn't better. Dwayne Haskins wasn't better. So last season, as a junior, Daniel Jones had 2,674 2, passing yards. 22 touchdowns, nine interceptions. Okay. I mean, not bad for the seventh rated passer in the ACC. And um, for his career, Daniel Jones threw 52 touchdown passes. 52 touchdown passes. And he was a three year starter. But the guy that you passed on, Dwayne Haskins, had 50 touchdowns last year by itself. <laughs> Okay, so again, I ask you, what makes Daniel Jones uh, first round six pick over all draft material? Oh, I think I got it. I think the light bulb just went off. His coach at Duke was the coach for Mississippi when Eli Manning, who was still the quarterback of the New York Giants, he was the coach when Eli Manning was in college at Ole Miss. Oh, I think I figured out something else. Daniel Jones went to the Manning quarterback camp. Wow, we. And then he works out with Peyton and Eli Manning. Oh. So in other words, what you got is a privileged draft pick. It's a I know them draft pick. Not necessarily the best player draft pick. And then Dave Gettleman, who is just who Dave Gettleman is becoming must see TV because you never know what what crazy old stuff Mr. Gettleman is going to do next. The adventures of Dave Gettleman. Biatch. Boy, oh boy. He is he's he's a character. What are you, a dumbass? He comes out and says that um, they may take the Green Bay route with Daniel Jones. For those who don't know what the Green Bay route is, is when Aaron Rodgers was drafted, he sat behind Brett Favre for three years before he got his uh, time to start. Three years. 
So basically what that is telling me is that they want Daniel Jones to sit behind Eli for at least probably two years because he won't say nothing because he's a quote unquote friend of the family. And you don't want to draft Dwayne Haskins because Dwayne Haskins will probably be ready by mid season, at least by next year to say, all right, old man, had your run, won your Super Bowls. Bye. Hello, operator. Give me the number for 911. But the only problem is, see, when Aaron Rodgers was sitting behind Brett Favre, Brett Favre was taking the Packers to the playoffs. He was. Matter of fact, Brett Favre's last season in Green Bay, they went to the NFC Championship game. They hosted the NFC Championship game. If you've watched Eli Manning, particularly in 2017 and 2018, do you see Eli Manning getting better? Damn it, damn it, son of a bitch. Damn it, damn it. I mean, it's just a a simple question. Do you see Eli Manning getting better? Let's think about the weapons. You just traded Odell Beckham. Dumb. You do still have Saquon Barkley. You do still have Evan Ingram. You gave Sterling Shepard a contract extension. Eh, okay. How's that offensive line, though? Hmm. So, pretty much, what I'm seeing, again, is a privileged draft pick because the Giants are having a hard time parting ways with their two-time Super Bowl champion, their longtime quarterback, who, by the way, since they won the Super Bowl, the, their last Super Bowl in 2011, has been to the playoffs once. <laughs> And that was 2016. And I got nothing against Eli. I used to think people were too hard on Eli. But look at Eli's first half of his career. Look at the first half of his career. And then look at the second half of his career. I don't need to pull up no notes because I know this all off the top of my head because I'm fucking nice like that. Okay, the first half of Eli's career. Let's see. Let's. How many years has he been in the league? Let's see. 04, 05, 06, 07, 08, 09, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 15 years. So let's look at the first, say, seven, eight, shall we? Okay, rookie, 2004, no playoffs, okay. But 2005, division championship. 2006, playoff appearance. 2007, Super Bowl championship. 2008, number one seed in the NFC. Missed the playoffs in 2009, missed the playoffs in 2010. 2011, Super Bowl championship. And that was his seventh season. So... And Eli Manning's first seven years in the league, his first seven, first motherfucking seven. Let's see that. five, oh six, oh ten, oh eight. In the first seven years of Eli's career, he went to the playoffs five times. Five times. Won a Super Bowl championship. Excuse me, won two Super Bowl championships. And then the last eight years of Eli Manning's career. He's been to the playoffs once. One time. One time. In 2016. That's it. So the Giants are having a problem parting ways. Now, Eli Manning is a class act. We all know that. But sometimes you have to know when it's your time to go. Now, as far as physical, physically, Eli Manning is way, way, way better off in physical condition than Peyton was at 38. I mean, Eli Manning is about to be, Eli Manning is 38 years old, about to go into his 16th season. When Peyton Manning was 38 years old, Peyton Manning threw for 39 touchdowns. Do you see Eli Manning throwing for 39 touchdowns next season? I mean, I'm just saying, do you see that? I don't. So, they draft this guy, Daniel Jones, so Eli can play, but play mentor. I don't know. I feel sorry for Saquon Barkley because they're going to stack up the box, and he's going to have a hard, hard time. I hope the Giants don't don't use him up before he's able to get paid the fat-ass check that he's going to deserve. I'm serious. And then here's the funny part. Here's the funny part. So, when... Goodell announced the draft pick. 
they were showing Dwayne Haskins, who was not in Tennessee with, you know, the rest of the players. He had his own thing going on in Maryland. And he called Daniel Jones' name. Dwayne Haskins started laughing. That, that was funny. But then at the 15th pick, the Washington Redskins draft Dwayne Haskins. And he, you know, put on the hat, gave a couple of hugs, but kind of shook his head. He just seemed irritated. He said he just really seems, I mean, he just really seemed irritated at what had just transpired. Now, you figure he's living in Maryland, so he's very familiar with the Redskins, but, you know, there talks now that this was a Daniel Snyder thing. But to me, the Redskins didn't mess anything up. They He fell in their lap. And you don't know what the hell's going on with Washington in their uh, quarterback situation because Alex Smith, his career might be over because of that injury that he suffered late uh, last season. Colt McCoy, he's still not uh, healthy. I mean, you're going to stick with Josh Johnson? And are you going to stick with Case Keenum? You suck. <laughs> Good luck with that one. <laughs> I'm serious. Good luck with that one. Um, by the way, the Broncos drafted Drew Locke, quarterback from Missouri. Can't say I paid attention to a lot of Missouri games, but I hope – I don't know because I can't say that I trust Elway with drafting quarterbacks. This is the sixth quarterback that he's drafted, and the other five, they all didn't quite pan out. Brock Osweiler. Huh. Trevor Simeon. Actually, was all right. I thought he was okay, at least – in uh, 2016. Paxton Lynch. Oh, my God. Paxton Stench. Sorry. Ooh, let me shut up. Uh, Chad Kelly, who actually I believe was the best, but Chad Kelly just couldn't stay out of trouble. You know, couldn't stay out of trouble. There's another one sprinkled in there somewhere, but I don't know. I don't know. I mean... I guess maybe if Joe Flacco can play respectable, Drew Locke can learn a little something, and then we'll see what happens from there. But that's all I wanted to touch on as far as the NFL draft is concerned. Now to other uh, football-related events, well, related to a football player, I'm pretty sure everybody has heard what is going on with Kansas City, the Kansas City Chiefs superstar wide receiver Tyreek Hill. There was an investigation a couple of weeks ago in regards to child abuse where Tyreek Hill and his fiance were both questioned. And I want to say about a week ago, that investigation was closed. The Kansas City police said that there was no evidence found that Tyreek Hill's name should even be on the report. So he was cleared. But then this always seems to happen when it comes to athletes. A recording came out, but this is an audio recording. A recording came out, and it's a conversation between Tyreek Hill and his fiance. Let's listen. You're not listening to me. Think about why a freaking three-year-old would tell everybody and anybody that you broke his arm. Why would you do that? I'm then the, why? I'm the only one that plays with him. Maybe that's why you don't do with him. I'm the one that get physical with it. No, I play with a hell of a lot more than you do. You just sit on your game all the damn time that's all you need to do so don't sit here and tell me i don't play with you right you right bro like i said i'm sorry for whatever happened because obviously this 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 wasn't a match made in heaven right here you know what i'm saying we don't need no beef no we don't everywhere we go my son loves on me Everywhere we go. And then when we get home, what and is we, it? And when we get home, it's for real. It's, it's serious time. It's time to lock in because he know I don't play. I want my son to learn respect, something that, that uh, you did not teach teach our son and something that he will get his ran over in his work. Because, first of all, our son is black. These white folks don't give a about our kids. They don't. And you know that, bro. And that's sad, bro. These things could have been handled a lot differently with him than the way that they have been now. Right. And these twins. Right. You got it, bro. And they said time and time again that literally kept saying, Daddy punches me, which you do when he starts crying. What do you do? You make him open up his arms and you punch him in the chest. And then if he gets in trouble, you get the belt out and you okay, do. Okay, so what about you? You, you, you? What you don't do? You. Also, I'm just going to take it. No, I told. You don't. I, 
told him that he gets whooped. I told him that he gets whooped, but I don't use a belt, which is totally you different. You do use a belt, and that's sad. Even my mama said you use a belt. When have I used a belt? And now somehow this investigation got brought back up, and you're about to lose your So now I really want you to sit and think about it, because I rode for you against nah. that detective and the CPS people. You really, really, really need to think about why says somebody somebody broke his arm and every single time he says it's you I don't know, and then if i Maybe. look at him he'll change his story because he because like he telling the truth then bro and that's sad bro like, so and the, then you the sit here I, and I tell me program, bro. no and then you sit here and tell me that I, i'm not riding for you you're not bro you're not bro you ain't riding for me in 2014 you damn sure they ride for me now bro and like i really fully totally believe in my heart that you got something to do with your money behind this Look. He is terrified of you, and you say that he respects you, but it's not its he not respect. Me. It's terrified. He is terrified of you. You need to be terrified of me, too. Don't That's why you can't. Okay, so basically, what I take from that is, one, there's a lot of finger pointing going on. There's a lot of finger pointing going on. If you listen to that audio, you'll just hear a lot of, well, this is what I do, and this is what you do. Well, I do this, and you don't do this, and blah, 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 blah. So there's a lot of finger pointing going on, which basically means both of them are some piss-ass parents. Straight up. Straight up. Both of them are some piss-ass parents. They're not doing what they're supposed to do when it comes to taking care of the kids. And i tell you why. Because in the society that we live in today, particularly with... Um, Couples in their 20s, even couples in their 30s, people now are so caught up into what they're doing that the kid is an afterthought. People are so caught up, adults nowadays, and it really starts nowadays. Think about how much these kids nowadays, these preteens, these these eight year olds, these nine year olds, these 12, 13 year olds. Think about how much. A phone controls their life, or a tablet controls their life, or a TV or an app controls their life. And where do they get it from? Because they sit there and see mommy and daddy on the phone, on their phone all the time, and we give it to them to shut them up, even at ages of three years old. So despite all of the finger pointing and back and forth that they're both doing, that doesn't change the fact that both of them are not doing what they're supposed to do because they're caught up in their self and what they want to do. He's saying that he's the only one that plays with them. She's saying all you do is play your video game all day. And she's by no means Miss Innocent, so I'll get into that a little bit later. But anyway, Tyreek Hill, of course everybody knows that he had a troubled past, that he got in trouble in college while he was in school. But either way, what is going on with the Kansas City Chiefs skill position players? You guys remember what happened a few months ago with Kareem Hunt, who was kicked off the team? Now, incidentally, from this recording, the police has reopened this investigation. The Kansas City Chiefs have barred him from any football-related events. He cannot come to their uh, facility pending this investigation. So... What you have now is a case of what appears to be pure, blunt child abuse. Okay, the most important thing is the stability and the safety of the three-year-old boy. Now, telling a three-year-old boy to spread his arms open so you can punch them in the chest, a three-year-old boy, that, that, that's taken a little too far for me. That's taking a little too far for me. Now, I will sit here and tell you, and I don't care how anybody looks with me, how anybody looks at me. I am pro spanking. OK, because that's one thing that I feel that is wrong with these children in the world today. That's why they're little smart ass little fuck ups. And I'm and excuse my language, but if you don't like it, I don't care. I'm just telling you my opinion. This is why kids act the way they do today, because there is no fear of consequence. There is no fear of any kind of discipline because now everybody wants to be so goddamn soft. OK, these kids do something that these kids do something uh, to mess up and you basically want to. Give them a soft talk, sit them in the corner, and then a couple of hours later, go take them to do whatever the hell they want. No. No. These kids are way smarter today than we were, even just 20 years ago. 
20, 25 years ago when technology was really starting to make its mark. These kids nowadays are way smarter. Okay, so a kid is going to figure, okay, well, I just did this and this is all that happened to me. <laughs> okay, no. Okay, no. So I am pro-disciplining your kids. Disciplining them, not abusing them, though. That's a difference. That's a difference. I have a seven-year-old son. I have a three-year-old daughter. And my three-year-old daughter, that is my little patience tester. She will try you to the fullest. I mean, I will sit here and say, my daughter talks back. She uh, she can be disrespectful. She throws temper tantrums. She doesn't like being told no. She's even swung on her mother. Now, I would never tell her to spread her arm open so I can punch her in the chest. I might I might pluck her in the ear every now and again. Yes, I do. But I'm pro-discipline, not abuse. My son is seven years old and he's getting big. When he was three, I ain't never punch him in the chest. Honestly, to tell you the truth, I barely touch my kids because I don't need to. Now, when Tyree Kill is saying he knows I don't play, but you beat him with a belt, I've never, ever hit my kids with a belt before. Never. I don't need to. All I have to do, my son knows he messed up. If I just give him a certain look and I just um, I use my index finger to tell him to come here, he knows that he messed up. The point where I don't need to touch him. I don't need to touch him. Now, if you're going to talk about your, your son and, you, you know, you have a 12-year-old, a 13-year-old, and you punch him in the chest, I can, I, I can understand that. You know, I can understand that. But as opposed to a 3-year-old, no. No, 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 no. That's ridiculous. That's child abuse. And now his arm is broken? Come on, man. Come on, man. Don't no three-year-old need to be walking around from a broken arm just because you couldn't keep your hands to yourself because you got mad at him. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Now, Tyreek Hill said something that I totally agree with when he said something about discipline and they need to learn discipline. I will go back to what I was saying earlier about this is why this is what is wrong with children today is because discipline is not implemented enough, particularly with young black kids. I agree with him 100 percent that these people out here, they don't care about our kids. So we do need to instill some type of discipline and stop being so goddamn soft on these kids. And when they mess up, stop trying to save them. But we're talking about a three-year-old. You know what I'm saying? I understand instilling discipline in a three-year-old because this is what my mom used to tell me. Got to get them early. My dad used to tell me that too. Got to get them early so they'll learn. So it's instilled in them. I get it. But that's just going a little too far. You remember what happened with Adrian Peterson just a couple years ago? I want to say it was the 2016 season. You remember what happened with AP? He got suspended the whole year for uh, for child abuse because there was whelps and marks and scratches all over him. Now, like I said, I do believe in discipline by spanking. I, I do when it's necessary. When it's necessary, not excessive. Okay, there's a big difference. I raise my kids. I feed my kids. I clothe my kids. I wish somebody would tell me how to discipline my kids. I wish a motherfucker would. But I'm not excessive. I'm not excessive. It's a real it's a real fine line that we're that we're you we're toting here. You know, because now Tyreek Hill could possibly get suspended indefinitely. Now I've heard some people say he should never be allowed to play football again. Shut up. To people who say that, shut up. Okay. Anytime somebody has a tra a bad transgression, makes a mistake, we just want them to lose everything that they got and for them to never be heard from again. People act like so much that they shit don't stink. It makes me sick. Should he be uh if if this is true, should there be serious discipline, harsh discipline actions? Yeah. Yeah. But should he never be allowed to play again? He so he doesn't deserve to make a living. If he's not able to play football, how that child going? How that child going to eat? Who going to take care of him? Because whether whether 
people want to hear this or not, what Tyreek Hill did is dead wrong. But to the people out there who are saying that he should never play football again, I'm sorry. His father being able to play football will give him the best opportunities that that uh, he can be given because of the money that his father is going to be making. Did anybody stop to think about that? Come on now. If this is true about Tyreek Hill, he does not deserve to play football in the 2019 season. Or he should be suspended for three-fourths of it. But he should definitely be back for 2020. Because like I said, I actually agree with him as far as the discipline and the respect. But I'm not punching my, my kid in the chest, breaking their arms, or hitting them with belts. I'm not doing that. The hell is wrong with you? And that has nothing to do with the world that we live in now. I'm just not doing that. And I got hit with belts. I got hit with switches. I got hit with extension cords. I think I even got hit with a phone. <laughs> I got back smacked with a handful of rings. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I laugh because I'm not trying to be funny. It would make you straighten up and fly right. This is this is the era that I came from. I mean, I'm 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 laughing because it is actually funny to me because one, I'm alive. But I'm alive. And the other part is that if you did get spankings or ass whoopings, whatever, however you want to call it, but you had a decent upbringing and you turned out to be okay, to be a, a good person, a decent human being, a, 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 decent, a decent human being by society standards. When you look back on that as a kid, it is funny to you. It is funny to you because you actually think about what you were doing to warrant the ass whooping. Honest. Now, none of us were three years old when we're, you know, when we're reflecting on that. But you actually sit back and be like... Man, my mama had the right to beat the shit out of me, or my daddy should have broke my damn neck. I mean, you, cause you, you think about the stuff that you were doing. Nowadays, you don't have that. You have people that don't have nothing to do with your kids, your household, your income, your nothing. Come and try to tell you, don't do that. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. Kiss my black ass. If I feed my kids and I clothe my kids and I take care of my kids and I raise my kids, who the hell are you to tell me what I can and cannot do to my kid? But like I said, we're talking about a three-year-old kid in this instance where, like I said, both of them are piss-ass parents. Now, let me get into let me get into um, let me get into the to, to the fiance. OK. And by the way, the fiance is pregnant with twins. Why is this recorded? Why is this recorded? And I mean, what's the point? What is the point of recording this? Because if you listen to the way that she was talking to him, she was talking to him as if she was trying to give away all of this incriminating evidence, all of these clues, but still try to make herself you know, look like almost I don't want to say the victim because she did say that she that she whoops him. But she's just trying to make it seem like it's him. It's him, it's him, it's him, it's him, it's him. So so like why why? First of all, if he's ever put his hands on you, and by you I mean her, if he's ever done that, what you still doing with him? I mean He's a professional athlete. If he touches you, I mean, if he if he's abusive to you, then why are you still with him? You have his kid. You're good. I mean, he said himself that he believed that she had something to do with this. So you're talking about a relationship that's mm, where, like I said, both of them are piss ass parents. So why record this? Why, rec why record this? What is this something of an insurance policy? Something to hang over his head? Because at the end of the day, you might make him look bad, but you're going to look bad too. You're going to make yourself look bad too. If he gets suspended from football, how are the kids taken care of? Like I said earlier, and people, when are we going to, f when are we going to, uh, how do I want to put this? 
don't put nothing don't put shit past anybody and by that I mean when are people in these relationships or people who you think are close to you you swear out that they would never do this or they would never do that to you yes they would I'm here to tell you from experience yes the hell they would you you, you I mean I'm not trying to be funny but don't put shit past anybody she would never do something like that to me. I know her. She would never do. Yes, she would. Whatever it is you think that she wouldn't do to you. Yes, she would. He would never do anything like that to me. He loves me. I know him. He's the one. Yes, he would. <laughs> yes, the hell he would. Especially if there's any type of friction in a relationship. And it doesn't even have to be a relationship. It could be with a family member, a best friend. Or I guess they're, you know, considered technically as relationships. But you know what I mean. Don't put, don't put shit past nobody. Just when you think, just when you think you know somebody, they will set your ass up. Like I said, especially if there was friction. They will do something to screw you clean over. And, and what makes, what gets me is they will, somebody will do something just, fucked up and trifling and then try to make it seem like it came from a good place what <laughs> huh and especially if you are pro athlete for i mean like i said as far as she goes for one he keeps on calling you bro what the what and next dude or next relationship uh-uh sorry because that's a respect factor right there and then he said, you need to be terrified of me too, bitch. Wow. Wow. And said, that's why you, you know, that's why you can't keep a, a effing N word. That's, you know, wow. And this is your dude. This is your guy. But like I said, she got an ulterior motive too. So she ain't all Miss Innocent by no means. Both piss ass parents. And what has happened with the three year old, he is not with them. They have child protective services has removed him from their home and he's with a uh, family that he's familiar with and it is not relatives. So because at the end of the day, the main concern needs to be about this three year old boy who has a broken arm. So you just you pray for him and hope that everything gets better. And um, as far as Tyreek Hill and his fiance, they both need to get their shit together. They do. And these, I mean, recordings of the conversation. I'm gonna tell you something. If I if I ever if I'm ever to become a celebrity, while I'm out in public, I don't give a damn who I am. I don't give a damn who I'm with. Everything that I say is gonna be so PC, or I'm just not gonna say nothing. Because somebody is I mean, and like I said, don't put nothing past anybody. Anybody could be recording you. Ask Donald Sterling. Anybody could be recording you. I mean, goodness gracious, you think you've been good with a person, you known them for, for 20, uh, 15, or 30 damn years, and they will get your ass. I swear, people going to learn one day. People going to learn one day. But anyway, y'all pray, honestly, y'all pray for that family, pray for that little boy, man, because, you know, a three-year-old, I understand three-year-olds are very mischievous, but... They don't deserve that. They don't deserve to be punched in the chest or have their arm broken. They really don't. So next topic that I will get into today will be the NBA playoffs. Now, tonight uh, will be at 730 will be game one of the second round of the Eastern Conference playoffs, the Eastern Conference semifinals. They start tonight, the first game, and it'll be the Philadelphia 76ers visiting the Toronto Raptors. Now. Now, this is what I'm talking about, because now the playoffs are about to really, really heat up. You know, there were people complaining about the first round of the playoffs. You got what you will. You got what you got. Everybody knew that in the Eastern Conference that it was really just four teams, four powerhouse teams, maybe five. Victor Oladipo gets hurt, and, you know, the Pacers were a scrappy bunch. But people knew that the four best teams – pretty much by Christmas, knew that it was Boston, Milwaukee, Toronto, Philadelphia. 
especially with the moves that the 76ers made, getting Jimmy Butler and Tobias Harris. In the West, the West is what the West is, the better conference. Even though this is a stacked and this is a stacked and loaded of four power teams that the Eastern Conference has had in quite some time, but we knew what we were getting with the East. No series went more than five games. People were all shook up. Everybody was ready to put out the upset alerts after the first day of the playoffs when the Nets won at Philly and when Orlando won at Toronto, and those teams did not win another game. The Philadelphia 76ers absolutely destroyed the Nets in game five, and Toronto did the same thing. And Boston swept Indiana, and Milwaukee swept Detroit. So now this is what we've been waiting for. Now these four Eastern Conference teams can battle it out to see which one is going to represent the East in the finals. Now, as far as the West is concerned, the only surprise was that Golden State went six games with the Clippers. Golden State closed the Clippers out last night. Kevin Durant dropped 50. 50. And people were worried about him because of the way that Patrick Beverly was guarding him. Ever since game two, Kevin Durant has been absolutely unstoppable. And um, Houston, they finished Utah in five. And Portland, now Portland beat Oklahoma City in five games. But you're talking about a very, 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 very competitive five games. And then uh, Damian Lillard and Russell Westbrook was going at it. Really, that was more or less Russell uh, Russell Westbrook uh, talking a bunch of stuff. But if you saw the walk-off three-pointer to end the series that Dame Dollar did and then looked at them and waved bye-bye, he pulled up from 37 feet right on Paul George, and that's after Oklahoma City blew a 16-point lead where they could have sent it back to OKC for game six. And Dame Dollar said, it's Dame time. Y'all don't know me. This is what I do. Biatch. And Paul George said that it was a bad shot. Not for him. He has that type of range. He's shown, he's consistently shown that he has that type of range. So that series ended in five. And game seven between the Spurs and the Nuggets is tonight at 10 o'clock. I said I thought the Spurs would win. I'm going to stick with it, even though I'm low-key rooting for the Nuggets because they're young and up and coming. So I just like, I just pop, man. I just don't know if I can go against the Spurs experience in a game seven, even though this isn't Parker, Duncan, and Ginobili, but DeRozan is very experienced, as well as uh, LaMarcus Aldridge. So things are pretty much panning out the way most people wanted them to. Um, I think most people would have preferred to see Houston and Golden State in the Western Conference Finals, but it is what it is. I'm still picking the Warriors, like, I, like I've said since the beginning of this show. I'm talking basketball just because it's something to talk about. You know, because the Warriors are going to win, period. Point blank, end of subject. The Warriors are going to win the championship. Now, what I do believe is that the road will be a little bit more difficult than I thought, particularly with whoever comes out of the Eastern Conference, whoever out of Milwaukee versus Boston, and Philly versus Toronto, and then the winners of that series uh, playing each other in the Eastern Finals. Whoever comes out of the East is gonna they're gonna give Golden State some difficulty, but Golden State is still gonna win. Make no mistake about that. Golden State is gonna win. So, you know, just let the let the games continue. I was gonna say let them begin, but just let the games continue. So, with that being said, what a buzzer, what a buzzer, what a buzzer! Oh. Okay, okay. Now, Thursday, Thursday, we went to go see Endgame. And man, I'm going to tell you, it was like that. Now, it started off slow because at the beginning, you, you know, you have Hawkeye having a family picnic in their, in their yard. And then all of a sudden, they disappear because of the snap. And in the meantime, in space, 
It's just Nebula and Tony Stark, Iron Man, and Tony Stark is recording his, I guess his death recording because he said they were about to run out of oxygen and he was just recording something to Pepper. And next thing you know, as he's asleep, Nebula was actually taking care of him. Nebula has grown to show some compassion because remember, she used to be a surly mean thing in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. But a bright light comes and it's Captain Marvel who comes and rescues Nebula and Tony Stark, takes him back to Earth. You know, uh, Iron Man is, looks vastly malnourished by this time. It looks like he can uh, barely stand up. He kind of has his moment where he snaps on, on Captain America talking about conversations that, that they had back in the Age of Ultron movie. And then the uh, remaining surviving Avengers, which is Captain America, Thor, Black Widow, Rhodey, <clears throat> Banner, and Rocket, and Nebula. They are trying to devise up a plan to get Thanos, get the gauntlet so they can reverse the snap. Nebula tells them where Thanos is going to be at because she says it's always been his plan to retire to said planet once his goal has been achieved. So they go there. Thanos by this time looks very weak halfway burnt up as he explains that happened to him with him destroying the power stones he destroyed them so that his actions could not be reversed the avengers uh, and i forget captain marvel was in there too she was in that mix captain marvel uh, comes and ambushes him the rest of them come in there and he says that hey i destroyed the stones he sees nebula because they thought he was lying nebula says he's not a liar and but he's trying to have a moment with Nebula before he before he can finish. Thor goes gangster and just cuts his head off. So five years go by. The world is just a shell of itself. Everything looks run down and abandoned pretty much. People just can't seem to get over the snap. Everybody seems has gone their separate ways. Captain America is now pretty much a counselor. Uh, Natasha Romanoff, Black Widow, is... I guess she must be in head of the world. Uh, uh, she must be in charge of the world council now because all of the hologram people from the leaders of the world were reporting to her. Rhodey's hologram showed up and he gave her an update on what Barton Hawkeye was doing and that he had pretty much went rogue. He had turned into a vigilante in the comic books known as Ronin. So... Uh, Captain America comes and visits Romanoff, who was in tears. And then all of a sudden, they get a knock at the headquarters, basically, and it is Ant-Man. Now, what happened? Um, Ant-Man, if you remember Ant-Man and the Wasp, was trapped in the, uh, was, uh, was trapped in the uh, quantum realm because when he was sent there for a test run, the snap happened and everybody disappeared. So he was trapped in there for five years. Now... The machine is in an abandoned parking lot and a rat runs over it and it releases Ant-Man. Now for him in Quantum Realm time, he was only gone for five hours, but it was actually five years. So when he gets out, he everything has pretty much gone to shit. And he sees these plaques on the board for everybody who disappeared in the snap and saw his name. So he immediately raced to his daughter's home uh, and she's gotten big. She's, she's not... A, full grown adult but she's she's a teenager and um so he goes to the avengers headquarters to fit quarters to figure out what happened he comes up with the idea of quantum travel there has to be a way where you can survive quantum travel well not survive but there has to be a way that you can control the time in the quantum travel so you can go back and and stop everything prevent everything or at least reverse the snap so ant-man Captain America and Black Widow go to Tony Stark who now is married and has a daughter and runs this idea by him but he's just like no he's kind of made peace with it he sees his daughter as his second chance at life but of course meanwhile later on in a later scene he's in the kitchen cleaning up doing his husbandly duties and he looks at a picture of Peter Parker and then he proceeds to find out a way to control quantum realm time travel so in the meantime, Captain America and 
Captain America and Banner, excuse me, Captain America, Ant-Man, and Black Widow go searching for the other brilliant scientists on their team, and that is Bruce Banner, who has now become Professor Hawk. And they try to give it a, they try to uh, give it a crack. You know, they were able to do it, but they didn't have any control over it. That was actually quite a funny scene. Then Tony Stark shows up and says, hey, figured it out. Because I'm the fucking man. I'm Iron Man. This is what I do. Let's do this. We're going to reverse this. We're going to bring them back, but we're not going to reverse anything that's happened over the last five years. A.K.A. he doesn't want to lose his daughter. So they go in the time. They all go in their own separate little missions. Uh, and by the way, they found Thor. They found Thor. Banner and Rocket found Thor five years later in a place called New Asgard. Thor has turned into a drunken fat mess. His long hair is back. He has a gut. He's an alcoholic to the extreme. So they convince him to go to the time travel. Rocket and Thor go to Asgard. Thor has a problem because, you know, he's he's been so distraught by the snap. He's really not himself, but he realizes that he came back on the day that his mother was supposed to die. Actually ran into his mother right after Rocket smacked the hell out of him to give him a pep talk. Uh, his mother actually, he ran into his mother. His mother knew that he was from the future. And she just said, be the man that you're supposed to be, not the man that people expect you to be. Uh, something like that. So that was a touching moment. Hulk, Captain America, Iron Man, and Ant-Man go back to 2012, the Battle of New York. And Steve Rogers gets one of the Infinity Stones in an elevator filled with then what we thought was shield agents but were later found to be in captain america uh winter soldier as undercover hydra agents he disguises him he makes it seem like he's a hydra agent gets away with one of the infinity stones then actually runs in at the 2012 version of himself and they proceed to fight younger cap has older cap in a headlock and then cap says bucky is alive younger cap releases his guard and cap older cap knocks him out and Tony Stark had it, him and Ant-Man had it, but the Hulk, the 2012 version of the Hulk had an attitude because they made him take the stairs from when they initially arrested uh, Loki at the top of Stark Towers. He kicked the, uh, he kicked the Tesseract, not the Tesseract, he kicked the cube with the Infinity, with the Infinity Stone in it out of, <clears throat> out of tony stark's hand who was dressed as a security guard loki picked it up and went into another realm so they're saying oh god we messed up we're so stupid we're dumb we're dumb we're dumb but iron man figured out a way where they could get the same stone back when it was unguarded they went back to 1970 that was a touching scene because tony stark met up with howard stark who at the time was expecting his first son young tony stark and captain america saw the love of his life peggy carter they were able to retrieve that infinity stone and meanwhile <clears throat> nebula and Rhodey went back to a scene from the guardian of the galaxy where quill had stolen the infinity stone they knock him out they take it the only problem is nebula cpu was linked up to 2014's nebula cpu so 2014 thanos and gamora could see the plan of what was happening and how they were planning to kill thanos and thanos figured out ah they're trying to kill me because i've accomplished my goal so when they got the infinity stone Rhodey and Rhodey and nebula tried to go back to the current time which was 2024 but they were unable to because nebula cpu well nebula was unable to because her cpu had been linked up with 2014 nebula cpu they ambush her 2014 nebula disguises herself to go back and they real and thinking that they wouldn't be able to tell the difference meanwhile black widow who had recruited hawkeye in the midst of his vigilante rage they go to um the place where the soul stone is at i don't remember the planet but they went to the place where the soul stone was at the Red Skull saw them and said, hey, well, this is what you guys don't know, is that in order to get the Soul Stone, one of you are going to have to sacrifice somebody that they love, a soul for a soul. So they literally fight it out with each other to see who's going to sacrifice himself. It ends up being Black Widow. That was a tear-jerking scene. It really was. So when 
Hawkeye comes back, there's no Black Widow. So now everybody's, they have all the Infinity Stones, but everybody is now distraught because Black Widow is dead. But they created their own gauntlet, and they were discussing on who would have to snap it. Thor said, I want the responsibility. And uh, Banner said, no, it has to be me. This is going to pretty much fill you up with radiation, which pretty much is what I'm made of. I can do this. I can survive it. Because that's what made Thanos so weak when he tried to snap it. When he snapped it and destroyed the, the Infinity Stones, it nearly killed him. And Hawk knew that, hey, he could take it. So, in the meantime, while they're gearing up for the snap, what they think is present Nebula is actually 2014 Nebula. She goes, opens up a quantum portal to bring in Thanos and his army. Hawk. Uh, incredible hawk makes the snap it appears that everything has been reversed because you see hawkeye's wife calling him but then after that the entire avengers headquarter was destroyed by thanos and his army and they proceed to go into a knockdown drag out fight and the ones the main ones who were trying to fight thanos was thor iron man and captain america he was dusting them at first about to kill thor but then somehow, some way, Captain America picked up the hammer and was beating the hell out of Thanos, who then summoned the rest of his army. And it looked like Cap was going to be all by himself. Then he got a page from Mr. Sam Wilson, a.k.a. A. Falcon. He said, on your left, you saw Doctor Strange's yellow magic, uh, sorcerer magic, open up the portals. And everybody, and I mean everybody, from the past MCU films and the ones who were who disappeared in Xfinity Wars came out. I'm talking Black Panther. Black Panther, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Falcon, Bucky. <clears throat> Everybody came out there. Um, the Guardians of the Galaxy, Quill, Drax, Groot. All of them came out there. And even the Valkyrie army from Asgard, from Thor. You had the whole Wakandan army from Black Panther. You had uh, the Sorcerer's army from Doctor Strange. So you're talking about knockdown, drag out fight. And Ant-Man made himself huge like he did in Captain America Civil War. He made himself huge. It was a brawl for it all. Captain Marvel came down there and destroyed Thanos' ship. They were pretty much trying to see who was going to destroy the gauntlet. Wanda, she's another one. She came back. She had a, This was funny to me. She was fighting Thanos one-on-one. -on -one. She said, you took everything from me. He said, I don't even know who you are. But while everybody was fighting to try to see who was going to destroy the, uh, the gauntlet with the Infinity Stones... Thanos was able to get it back and he proceeded to try to snap but Tony Stark came and took the Infinity Stones without his knowledge and put it in his gauntlet so when Thanos did the snap nothing happened when Iron Man did the snap it totally turned all of Thanos's army including himself to dust but in the meantime the, the effects from the snap ended up killing Tony Stark. And at his funeral, he had a hologram version of basically of himself talking to his daughter, saying that everything was going to be OK. And then one thing that was said, because Banner got the Infinity Stone from one of the sorcerers from Doctor Strange, said they have to be returned exactly to where they were. They sent Captain America to do it, said he'd be back in three seconds. He didn't come back in three seconds. It was more like six or seven. But what Bucky realized is Sam was starting to get upset. They saw an old guy sitting on a park bench. It was Cap. Cap decided to stay in 1943. He's an old man now, and he passed the shield on to Sam Wilson, who in effect is now the new Captain America. So what have we learned from this? Captain America is now an old man. He won't be Captain Steve Rogers as we know him. Black Widow is dead. Iron Man is dead. But it was an absolutely awesome movie. Can't wait to see Spider-Man uh, 2. Can't wait to see Black Panther 2. I wonder how they're going to do the Guardians of the Galaxy because Thor is now a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy. So this should be fun. But that was an 11-year run of absolute masterpieces for the most part. Thank you so much, Marvel. So I know that was long. I just had to get into it because I love that movie so much. But... This is your boy, Brandon Bravon Towns, host of that show called Sports Plus Life. I'm going to get at y'all in a minute. Holla back. Peace.